Welcome guys to another vlog, but a vlog very much entrenched in the channel, entrenched in the game series that we play. This channel has been pretty much built on game series, especially Zelda. We've done 14 Let's Plays of Zeldas, and I've done them in stints of course as well. We did the 5 original 3D Zeldas of console from N64 onwards, and then from there we moved onwards and had a little bit of a break. And then we did the older Zeldas, well some of them, and handheld titles as well as that, like Spirit Tracks and all that. And that lasted for a long, long time of that Zelda stint. We're having a little bit of a break now until new games come out and we can start getting another Zelda season going. But this channel is very much run on series. We've done a series as a whole. We've done Mass Effect. We're doing Golden Sun. We're playing for the second game of that at the moment. There's one more game in that series. We've done other games such as what? We've done the Paper Mario RPG type series. Plus, we started off on Mario & Luigi. We started off their general series. Of course, Paper Jam's coming out in the future. So we'll probably see more Paper Mario kind of stuff along down the line, or Mario Luigi stuff. We've done many series, Final Fantasies we've done, Final Fantasy XIII especially. Just so many things out there, and most of the channel is built around running along nice series. And recently we had an 121 episode Let's Play on the channel, of which I've noticed comments saying people want to see more from the series. And it is a Nintendo franchise that's very much spiking in popularity now. It was Having a bit of a wibble, having a bit of a wobble, we might have not seen it in the EU, in America and all that, in the Western world anymore if it wasn't for its latest instalment. So with that said, what series am I speaking about? If you haven't got the clue yet, I'll just say it outright. Fire Emblem. I want to continue doing some more Fire Emblem games and make Fire Emblem a big thing on the channel. It is a very interesting game. I very much like those little kind of strategy games. I mean, it's Intelligent Systems which designs the Fire Emblem series. And to be honest, they've made a lot of the series as a whole that I like, I enjoy. Paper Mario is a very big one. Advance Wars, I really enjoy the Advance Wars games. In fact, before I played Fire Emblem, I played Advance Wars. And of course, we're starting off on this Fire Emblem thing without me having played most of the games. Advance Wars was really the thing that kind of drew me over and then got me to play it. I played originally one of the GameCube titles, but we'll talk about that a bit later. That's the only one I played before we played Reckon No Ken for the channel. So, I want to gauge with you guys the popularity, what you want to see of each game that I own in the series currently. In fact, I think I do own all the Western releases, so that might give you a clue of what I am going to put up. But first of all, we're going to talk about each game in turn with a little bit of footage, a little bit of footage of the introductions. So, without further ado, let us get speaking about a certain Fire Emblem, Sacred Stones. Fire Emblem the Sacred Stones is the eighth game in the Fire Emblem series, but only the second game to reach over to Western Shores after Fire Emblem Reckon O Ken. It was the third in a Game Boy Advance kind of trilogy, but doesn't follow on any of the stories. In fact, it moves on to a completely different continent called Magvel. If the story follows Princess Arika and Prince Ephraim, as they investigate why a longtime ally has chosen to invade the nation's borders and the sudden appearance of monsters all over Magvel. Now that's taken from the Fire Emblem wiki, because I have not played this game, it would be a blind playthrough just like Reckon Ken with your guys' assistance. Supposedly it has one main route and it has a little bit of a branch midway through where I could play both routes on thing and go straight on through, no like Hector, Ellawood or Lindis mode. So it's all just one straight story all the way through. It changes from the previous game a little bit because it has a kind of world map system. If you played the latest Fire Emblem game, you would kind of know what I meant. And the enemies are pretty much just monsters, I've heard. So, an interesting game indeed and one of the possibilities that we can go on to. So what's the next game on offer? And so we move forward from Sacred Stones to the next one in the timeline. Oh, well, not timeline, more to the point, the Western releases, with Fire Emblem, Path of Radiance. Dark days are rising. War has engulfed the land of Tellius, where human Bayork and half-human Laguz view each other with mistrust. When a surprise invasion triggers a worldwide conflict, a sinister force emerges from the shadows and pits the two against one another. Only a young mercenary named Ike and his small band of soldiers for hire, the Grill mercenaries, stand between Tellius and Madness. Or so it says on the back of the Path of Radiance box, reading the blurb, whatever next. But still, this is the game that introduced me to Fire Emblem as I moved on 
from Advance Wars, I bought this game, played it, so it's the only one in the series I've played before, and of course I enjoyed it indeed. It has one straight path story, so no guiding chapters, no divergences, one playthrough is all you really need for a game like this, unless you want to play more, there's a little bit of extra supposedly you can find if you do. It was the first game to be released on home console, not a handheld. Over in the West, it's the ninth game in the series, and of course the third release overall in the Western world. So, a lovely GameCube classic it is, and with the kind of racial tensions that's slightly within it as well, it explores some really interesting themes, very much based on war and other things, especially as instead of being a lord or anything, you're a mercenary. You're kind of like an outside party that gets swept into the overall arcing story. So that is Path of Radiance, probably pretty classic game for the series, and very rare indeed. If you try to search you on eBay, 100 quid plus. Man, it is a rare game now. Limited print, that's for sure. So, what's next on the menu? The beauty of playing Fire Emblem Path of Radiance as well is that we can play more on that world. We have a direct sequel out. Unlike Reckon o Ken, which has a sequel that was actually kind of made before it, we do have a sequel on the next home console. So with that, we move on to Nintendo Wii, the tenth installment in the franchise. Fire Emblem, Radiant Dawn. Seeming Radiant Dawn is a direct sequel, I don't really want to spoil you or me that much on the game. There is not much of a blurb on the back of the case. All it says is command the members of the Dawn Brigade and use your strategic skills to free their homeland. Fight for a better tomorrow. So, as I don't want to spoil it, we'll just say some details about it. It is the fourth Fire Emblem game, of course, to be reaching the Western world. See, we've pretty much got them all at this point. We're pretty much going down the line. As I said, the 10th title for the series overall. The events of the game happen three years after Path of Radiance. So you can kind of assume that not all the story little branches really get tied up in the one game. There's still probably festering hate resentment. Evil out there, evil out there, there's evil always out there, isn't there? It's divided into four parts where you actually get to play as like from perspectives of different forces, different groups together, and even though that, it has just one story. 45 chapters long, supposedly, including epilogue and prologue chapters, so that sounds great. It starts off with a story of an uprising, a kind of revolution by this Dawn Brigade mentioned where Micaiah, that's going to be an interesting one, pronunciations of names are always interesting indeed, and Soph are pretty much the main protagonist, Micaiah especially. A lovely little lady again, not a lord character by the look of it. Right, the other interesting thing about Path of Radiance plus Radiant Dawn is that the progress carries over, so you get bonuses based on supports, weapon levels, stuff like that if you capture any of your skills, if you load it up as a save file, you get to carry it on from one game to the next in forms of little bonuses that help your characters. So you can kind of assume some more characters reappearing, let's put it that way. And the game overall has updates with well, new character kind of effects, attacks, and new battle mechanics as well, including supposedly height-based terrain and how it affects characters. So that's Path of Radiance in a little bit of a nutshell, but of course it's got better graphics, a bigger, better engine behind it and just probably more bombastic gameplay as it tries to tie up a storyline in the world of Tellius. What's next? And so we move on from the Tellius saga. Well, what game is next? What game come out next in the series? Well, this time it was a remake for the Nintendo DS, that's for sure. As we move on to a little bit of footage and a little bit of showing, a Fire Emblem Shadow Dragon. Ah, when Nintendo thought that just because they've got dual screens now on their handheld, they had to do dual pictures, screens on every game. It's not exactly great if you want to edit it together and make some really nice looking gameplay, but they never really did that with that in mind, did they? Right, this is the 11th installment of Fire Emblem. The fifth game, if I'm right in saying, to be released on Western Shores just a little bit after Radiant Dawn was released. It is a remake of the very first Fire Emblem game, and let me butcher the pronunciation of this. Ready to for your ears to bleed if you're a really big Fire Emblem fan? Fire Emblem and Kokurayu to Hikari no Tsurugi. Is that anywhere near correct? I'd be amazed. It has this kind of 2D but 3D battle style, and the reason we've got this layout going 
with the dual screens here, I'll show you a little bit of combat footage. It's the screen that you're fighting on, and the screen that the stats keeps flipping, so you kind of need both screens evident to play the game properly. The story, however, centers on Marth, the original Fire Emblem character. If you're a Smash Brothers fan, you'll definitely know this guy, as he embarks on a quest to win back the kingdom of Altea and rescue his kidnapped sister, Elise. And so there was a lot of done to remake this game, apart from all the remade graphics, apart from the new style. There's little bits of story added in, like prologue chapters, there were characters that were not present in the original version because Marv had more games that have not been released over Western Shores, so characters such as Frey supposedly have been introduced in this version. Thank you again, Fire Emblem Wiki. So, that's pretty much a little bit of what I know. It's blind let's play of course if we do it in the future because I have not played the game and as for the layouts by the way they're all changeable give me your opinions on every layout you've seen thus far and if you think it's okay or not I've kind of explained why we've got those dual side screens so what's the next game or more to the point what's the final game Finally, we reached the end of the line, the end of the line for the Western releases because of course between that Fire Emblem which I think was 11 and number 13 which was Fire Emblem Awakening, the one that really bring back the popularity for the series over in the Western world, the one that's pretty much guaranteed that Fire Emblem Fates will make it our shore, so let's see a bit of that. A bright future, or inevitable doom. You awaken in a strange land, mysteriously robbed of all memory. The man who finds you is Krom, Prince of Elise, and protector of his people. Joining his band of loyal shepherds, you find yourself caught in an epic battle between Naga, the Divine Dragon, and the Fell Dragon Grima, who vows to destroy all in his path. And as the newest game out, you guys most likely know or have heard of Fire Emblem Awakening, that's for sure. The 13th game in the series overall, and the 6th game to reach Western Shores, as you notice we've been going up one by one by order of release over here. But yeah, I don't really have to say much about this game. I don't know much about it because I haven't played it. If I did, I would know more. Thankfully, Fire Emblem Wiki's always got my back in this case. So, the story follows Prince Krom of the Halidom of Elise and his companions as they struggle during a turbulent era. One of the interesting things about this game is that players are able to combine the might of nearby allies using a pair-up system and enter dual battles using the dual system to defeat enemies. So basically side by side people can grow and support each other and just become better overall by being together statistically. So it has a world map like Fire Emblem Sacred Stones in that you can travel around in directions you want to, enemies might appear, you can go defeat them for extra experience, you can go shopping, get weapons whenever you want, and stuff like that. Apart from that, it has a customizable player avatar in which you can impart yourself on the world, not like Fire Emblem Reckon Ken where you had this tactician guy that kind of walked around if you know what I mean, but you never did anything with, you can compete in the battles this time and grow the character, you're very story centric this time round with a player avatar. There's also player marriage, so for example you can marry characters within the game including your own character and a children's system as well because there's just loads of chapters, there's loads of content in this game. In fact, Let's Play in this one would take a long, long time, let's put it this way. It has loads of DLC as well, my goodness. So apart from the fact it has 28 chapters, 25 straight ones and then prologues and the end game chapter as well, it has 23 side chapters that are part of the game or paralogues. And then it has another 25 DLC chapters or Xenologues. As you can see, this game would take a very long time. We'd be on it for probably more than the 120 episodes of Fire Emblem Reckon no Ken, thanks to the multiple stories there, or the two story paths with the extras, extras going on. So, with that said, that's a lot. A lot indeed. In fact, this is a familiar world, in fact, because this play takes place on two continents, supposedly. Thank you, Facts of the Wiki. Elise and Varm, which are the future forms of Achenea and Valentia, which are the first two games of the series, the stages where they take place. So, the game that is Shadow Dragon, or the remake, if you know what I mean, of the first game, takes place on Achenea, and Valentia is supposedly the Fire Emblem Gaiden kind of stage to take place. So it's very interesting this is back in the normal world, that's for sure. So, let's give a summary of all of that. And so guys, that is all. All of the stuff, all of the Fire Emblem games I have to play, and I'm pretty sure they're all the releases I can play without emulating any games. So, those are your options, those are your selections. Of course, 
Personally, if I were to give a personal choice on which one I'd like to play next for the channel, I would very much, very much like to go with the Path of Radiance into Radiant Dawn kind of world, because, well, a bit more home console, a bit more updated graphics before we maybe go back a bit, or more to the point, we want to kind of pace ourselves, maybe, so in the future, when Fire Emblem Fates comes out, we can maybe let's play that. So, if you guys would like to see more Fire Emblem, I would like to hear your opinions. What game would you like to see? Would you like to see one of these? Would you like to see one of these? Would you like to see Sacred Stones? It's the kind of thing I'm asking you. So, put your comments, put your suggestions, put your vote, put whatever you desire in the section below the video and tell me what you think about making Fire Emblem a big mainstay of the channel. And I will see you in the future. Bye bye. Right, I need to get a thumbnail for this video. Focus, hold the game within my eye. Hold the game. Keep it there. Keep what? what no, no. No, kitty, move. Move, kitty. Kitty, move. Stop looking. Kitty, move. Try to make a thumbnail. Dog. Oh. Ah. Oh. Oh. <laughs> Cutie. Now we must stare intently at the camera, watching the cat and the thing, looking creepy.